Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler. What an honor, privilege, and joy it is for me to be with you today. Hey, I pray that wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, that you would be able to set aside the next few moments to open up your heart to receive something that God has for you. You. You know, the scripture, the preaching, the teaching, the meditating on the scripture is an incredible thing. You and I could meditate, could hear a message, a teaching on one specific scripture. I've said this before John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. One person could hear that scripture and receive salvation. Another could receive, could hear that scripture and receive uh, healing. On and on and on. Whatever it is that you have need of, number one, you need to know God knows. He knows. He knew before you even knew, before I even knew. And so the beauty of our relationship with God is that he calls us to a place of rest. Not anxiousness, not fear, not panic, not worry, not even concern, but he calls us into a place of rest. When was the last time you just took a deep breath and just said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to let go. I'm going to allow you to do whatever it is you want to do in my heart, my life, in this moment in this circumstance, in this season, though it may have been a surprise to me, it's not a surprise to you. And I am going to rest to the fullest of my ability to rest in you, to trust in you. And you know, no matter how you look at this, the truth is, is that it's going to require us letting go. It's going to require us casting all of our cares upon the Lord because we know and we believe in how much he cares for us. And so rather than trying to figure out the solution, rather than trying to look at all the different angles, why don't we just trust God? Whatever it is, maybe today you're, tr you're, you're facing a physical si situation you believe, you're holding on to, you're trusting in the fact that you are the healed. You're not the sick trying to get healed. You are the healed resisting these trials, these attacks of sickness. But there are moments that you wear out, you wear thin, and you have to come back to the Lord and say, you know, Lord, I'm just going to renew my trust and my rest in you. Maybe it's something you've been dealing with for years. Maybe it's something that you're just tired of dealing with. Maybe it's something that has seemingly followed you all of your life. Once again, I want to encourage you, rest in him, trust in him, renew your love for him. His love is not renewed in us. His love is constant. It's consistent. We have all of his love. It's us who gets renewed. And especially in the topic that we're going to talk about today. You know, the disciples, and we're going to read this scripture in a moment, they said, Lord, increase our faith. Have you ever asked God a question and you were almost surprised and shocked at the answer that he gave you? Well, I believe these disciples were a little shocked. They were a little surprised when they were asking him to increase our faith. Sometimes the answer is not what we're looking for, but the answer from him will always be the right answer and the answer that we need. Increase our faith. Let's look at this, and we're going to be talking about this, I believe, this week. In Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6. And before I read this, let me make a statement. Using your faith will increase your faith. Using your faith, using the faith that you have 
in the situation. Now, this is the one thing that you and I have something in common. There is something that we're being called upon to use our faith in. Have you ever known that you were supposed to use your faith for a particular situation, but you kind of fast forwarded and got ahead of yourself? God wants you to focus on what it is he is asking you to believe him in, in this moment. Maybe it's a season that you're in. Maybe you're raising children and no matter how much you'd like to fast forward those children to be grown out, developing their own families, you're going to have to go through the season that God has called you to go through. Why? Because God has some good things in this season for you. Yes, right where you're at, even in the midst of tempt- temptations of being frustrated, of, of fighting off anxiety and fear, listen, even in your best situation, you are going to have to resist all of these temptations to give up, to throw in the towel, to compromise, to not function and operate by faith. You fill in the blank. But we all come back to the point, as I said at the beginning of the program, we're going to have to rest in him. You know, when you stop and you think about what we're talking about today, about resting in him, how many Christians struggle in this area. The, even the Apostle Paul said, I have abounded and I've been abased. I've been up, I've been down. I've been rich, I've been poor. I, 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 I've been in plenty and I have struggled. But in this one thing I have learned to do, in whatever state I'm in, I've learned not to be comfortable, but I have learned to be content. You know how many Christians think that they should be somewhere else, but yet the rate right where God wants them to be. You know how many Christians wish they were somewhere else? They frustrate the grace of God that he has gifted them and given to them in order to fulfill the assignment that God has given to them. Now, what is that assignment? So so often we think of assignments, especially ministers, may, may, maybe it's just ministers, but we, we, we think of it some to, to be something other than it actually is. Your assignment is right where you're at. Your assignment is your neighbor. Your assignment is what God has for you in this moment, in this day. So it's not becoming frustrated, but it's also recognizing, and I want to make sure that I mention this, it is going to require faith. Now, there's been a lot of teaching on faith. A lot of people have gotten frustrated because of the teachings on faith. But the fact of the matter is, Faith is God's operating system system in order for you to see his kingdom manifested in the earth and in your life. Let me say that again. God has chosen faith, faith, his faith, that is his operating system in order for his promises and his will for your life to come to pass. It will require faith. Now, Require not meaning that you're going to have to go out and get it. You already have it. You possess it. God's given it to you. All the faith that you will need in order to do what God has called you to do, you already have it. Now, sometimes we don't use it. Sometimes we don't develop it. Sometimes we frustrate it. We don't allow it to do what it's supposed to do. But my friend, God has already equipped you for the task. He's equipped you with not only the faith, but he's equipped you with the power. He's equipped you with the anointing. He's equipped you with the gifting. He's equipped you with the talent. He has equipped you with the people. He has, equi- he has fully equipped you. Now, how can I say that? Because Jesus is not getting up and down off of the throne. He is in repose. He is resting. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's there praying and making intercession for you and I. And I've thought a lot about this. What is Jesus praying? I believe one of the things that he's praying, Father, help them to see who they are. Help them to get their identity, not from what they do, but from what I have done. 
Help them to receive in fullness all that I have provided for them. And yes, help them to understand that I have given them faith for whatever it is that they're facing and whatever the challenge may be. Now, I know, hey, sometimes things can get a little challenging. And anybody who tells you that it doesn't, they're either not in the fight or they're lying to you or maybe a little of both. It gets challenging sometimes. Listen, your favorite preacher, pick that one, the one you like to listen to on the internet or on the radio or on TV, your favorite preacher, that one that you just can't wait to listen to, that one that you cannot wait to listen to what God has given to them, every person, listen, if it happened to the Elijahs and the Elishas, of the Bible, come on. If it happened to David, if it happened to Jesus in the garden, you don't think it's going to happen to you and I to where we're pressed, to where we're shaken, to where we're challenged? My friend, be of good cheer. As Jesus said, just as he has overcome the world, he has called and commissioned and equipped you and I to be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. You're not a failure. You're not a sum of what you do or don't do. You are who God says you are. You're a child of God. And I didn't plan on saying this, but I feel the Holy Spirit just pressing me because there's some of you that are watching that you just feel like throwing in the towel. Some of you have entertained thoughts of suicide. Oh, you wouldn't tell anybody that but God knows your heart. And today I believe the Holy Spirit is trying to reach out today and encourage you not to give up, not to throw in the towel, that your best days truly are in front of you. God does not decrease in what he does in your life. He increases. The, the kingdom increases. It expands. Faith grows. It develops. It conquers. It overcomes. God has called you and commissioned you and anointed you to do all that he, I can hear some say, my time has passed. I've blown it. I've failed. Can I share something with you that I've said before, but someone today needs to hear this, that before you were ever born into the earth, before you ever knew what God wanted you to do, before you ever knew any of the word, do you know that God knew everything that you were going to do for all of your days? Do you know that all of your days are numbered in God's book? Do you know that everything that you were going, and I, you say, how do I know that? Well, we don't need to go any further than Peter. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves of this. Not only did God know that you were going to be faithful, not only did God know that you were going to function and operate in faith, but he also knew the moments that you were going to fail. Here's Peter. Peter, whether you like him or not, Peter got out of the boat. He was willing to put God's word to the test of faith and step out on the word. But do you know that there was a moment that Jesus looked at Peter? Right after he had had an incredible revelation of declaring, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him and he said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You have, you have just stepped out of this dimension into the heavenly dimension, into the kingdom of God, and you have... And right after that, Peter is trying to prevent Jesus from fulfilling his ultimate calling and his ultimate assignment. And that was to go to the cross, to suffer, to shed his blood, and to be raised triumphant from the grave. Now to sit at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us. Did you know that Jesus looked at, at Peter and he said, Simon, the, the cock, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. And Peter said, he argued with Jesus and said, no, not me, Lord. I'll never deny you. And just a few short hours later, 
the words of Jesus came to pass in Peter's life. Now, have you ever stopped? I know we, we stop and we look at moments that we fail and we agonize over them sometimes. But have you ever stopped and thought what Peter was facing and dealing with as he went out that morning to fish and to go back to what was familiar? His faith was shaken. His confidence was shattered. And over and over and over, those words in his head that Jesus spoke to him, Simon, you are going to deny me. But you know, the good news is it didn't stop there. Because Jesus said, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not, and when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. Did you know that before you ever experienced a failure, a misstep, a moment that you didn't function and operate in faith, Did you know that it's not a surprise to God? It's not a surprise to Jesus. It's not a a surprise to the Holy Spirit. He has prayed past your pain and prayed past your problem. He has prayed past your circumstance. And he sees you in a place of victory. Do you know even the prophets of old? that were used of God in a mighty, mighty way. Do you know that there was a moment that they were so overcome with fear, so overcome with anxiety, that they prayed for God to kill them? You know, when you read the scripture, you not only should read the highlights, but you also should read the lowlights. You should, you should read the moments of humanity. I know that we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. I know that we carry about divinity. But my friend, we still are called to crucify the flesh daily. To keep that old carnal nature under submission to the authority and the rule and reign of Christ in our life. And we've been given the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to teach us, and yes, to strengthen us. How? One of the greatest ways that he strengthens us is points us right back to the word. Increase our faith. Is that the right prayer? Let's see. Using your faith will increase your faith. In Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6, the apostle said to the Lord, said to Jesus, increase our faith. And so Jesus said to them, if you have faith as a grain of seed of mustard seed, and you say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted by the sea, that it would obey you. Using your faith will increase your faith. Isn't it something, and this is what I had alluded to earlier that So often we ask Jesus an answer, it's not a yes or no, or even the answer that we would think. He goes into this illustration of them taking the faith that they presently have and putting it to words. I I, I know that we're used to hearing, uh, you know, not putting our faith to words, but putting our faith to actions. But the most powerful action that you and I could ever use is not just believing, but it's also speaking. And it's taking the faith that we have been given, that God himself has implanted within us, and using that faith where we presently are. Where are you at today? What is it that you're needing God to do in your life? What are the circumstances that you're facing? Is it physical? Is it emotional? Is it spiritual? Is it financial? Where is it that God is waiting on us? As I've said before so often, we would say, I'm waiting on you. But could it be that we, that, that we are not the ones that are waiting on God, but that God is waiting on us? Waiting on us to do what? 
waiting on us to use the faith that he's already given to us. Maybe today your position, your station, the place that you're at right now is that it's going to require you using your faith to once again begin to worship the Lord. Once again, begin to be thankful. Once again, begin to be grateful. Maybe that's an area of your life that God is beginning to touch your heart, to deal with your life that has begun to lack, slack, and fall away. Maybe today the greatest thing that you could do for God is not to go out and win the millions, is not to travel all over the world, but maybe the greatest thing today for you to do is to once again begin that relationship of worship, of adoration, of glorifying, and of blessing His name. You know, you know one thing that I have found, and we'll pick this back up tomorrow, but when I began to worship the Lord, when I, get, when I begin to focus on Him and not focus on my struggle, my difficulty, my challenge, which really when you think about that, we are dead men and women walking. We've been crucified with Christ. So it is not our challenge, it is His challenge. And anytime we find ourselves bearing that load and carrying that weight, we hear the words, cast all of your cares upon me. You know that we were not meant and we were not designed and we were not created to carry burdens. He is, but not us. You and I as believers were created and predestined to walk in the blessing and in the relationship that God has so graciously given to us. So rather than trying to be so busy and fixing this problem and that problem, why don't we focus on the opportunity that's in front of us to use the faith that God has given to us to trust Him, to rely upon Him, to depend upon Him, and yes, to be led by Him. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm so grateful today. I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit has been gifted and given to each and every one of us to lean on, to trust in, and to be led by. I ask you today for that one that maybe they feel like that their backs have been pressed so tightly against the corner that they just don't know what to do. Help them to look up. Help them to trust you. Help them to lean upon you. You've invited us in your word to do just that, but the rest is up to us to cry out to you, to trust you, and to rely upon you and depend upon you. Be gracious to them, be kind to them, and allow your face to shine brightly upon them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I pray that today's program has been a blessing to you. If it has, I want to encourage you, share it with somebody. Sow it into someone's life. Also, I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel at Faith is the Victory Fellowship YouTube. And while you're there, take a moment and subscribe. There you're going to find all of our messages. They will be a blessing to you. Last but certainly not least, I want to encourage you to please go into the description section immediately after the program, and there you're going to find several safe, simple, and secure ways in which you can give with confidence to the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. We want to say thank you so very, very much for your generosity. Well, until tomorrow, right back here tomorrow at Faith is the Victory Fellowship Facebook at 12 noon Eastern. I want to tell you that I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never, ever forget, He is faithful.